Today we enter a new series in our uh, congregation. This series, as we've been told, is prompted by, I've been meaning to ask, and there will be four questions that come to us in this series. The series begins today with, where are you from? And you've had opportunity to already uh, enter those answers, where are you from, on the chart on the way in, and the phone that I forgot to bring this morning, I forgot to bring to the pulpit. And some of you are offering uh, additional answers now to 559-977-8076, which Jeremiah is going to put back on the screen. That number, I mean. The reflection that we are entering today includes questions like this. How does this story of origin, that is the story in Genesis, impact your identity and how you see yourself and others? How does the story shape how you see our relationship with creation? And how can we practice breathing life into others? So we approach the text today with the prompt, where are you from? The first answer I give is, well, I'm from Bridgewater, South Dakota. I lived there from age six to 16, and that place shaped my life. My wife says the same thing about Kerman, Oklahoma where she spent the first 18 years of her life. Here's some answers that are coming in. Reedsport, Oregon, Clovis, California, Vienna, Austria, uh, the good ship Queen Mary, Northwest Territories, Canada, Inman, Kansas. You wanna know where that is? Says the author, think close to Hillsborough. Vancouver, Winnipeg, Boone, North Carolina, Hillsborough, Kansas, Pasadena, California. How about China? We're all from China because Al Duick's been there almost 50 times and he's part of us. Where are you from? What's the first place that comes to mind? But what are all the other places that have shaped you? We are enriched by the fact that we are from places that have shaped our lives. Where are you from is our prompt today. Genesis 2 tells us that we have a common origin story. That is, we all come from a place together. The text says that Yahweh Elohim shaped Adam from the Adama. To do a little more translating, the Lord sculpted, the Lord God sculpted the earthling from the earth. The Lord God molded the human from the humus. Even the words tell us that we as human beings come from the good earth. The text then goes on to add that the Lord God breathed into Adam and he became a living nephesh. According to Ted Hebert, this idea of breathing is a farm image, one that might be captured, as I recall, my 10 or 12 year old daughter helping her, babe, her mother Beagle give birth to the first litter. And about halfway through, we needed the vet help, the vet's help. So she came into surgery with us. And as the babies came out, these baby puppies, it was her job to hold them and mold them and breathe life into them, breathe that other stuff out of the nostrils so that they could become, yeah, living nephesh. God shaped. Adam 
and breathed into his nostrils this breath of life. And the Lord God planted a garden, and the Lord God placed there the Adam, the Adam, the human. Our roots are in the garden. The garden prepared for humans by God. The garden prepared for all living things by God. Genesis 2.19 says that the Lord God molded from the humus, same stuff, the Lord God molded from the humus the animals and the birds. And whatever the human called the living nephesh was its name. Translators are interpreters. And almost every translator is scandalized by the fact that the original author refers to both the animals, birds, and the humans by that same word that we usually translate soul. The living breath that passes over the throat is something that's common to all the life that breathes. We come from the same stuff, all of us as human beings, and everything that lives and breathes on the planet. We have a common origin story. Humans flourish by embracing our God-given vocation. We as human beings do well when we accept God's call on our lives. God's mission statement is God's call to us, given to all humanity in the opening stories of creation. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, in the version that we just read, Hebert interprets it, God gave the humans the task of farming and taking care of the earth. But the translator has said in retrospect, I wish I had tried to get the editor's permission to translate it closer to the way that word is usually translated, and said to serve and guard the soil, the earth. The word that's often translated till, here translated farm, could most often be translated serve. What a radically different way to think about the vocation that God has given to each of us. How Christ-like we are here to serve the soil, the created things, one another, the purpose of God in the world. And the second word, to take care of it, is a little weaker than the original often is translated. The last verse of chapter 3 says that the cherubim were left in place at the edge of the garden in order to guard it. And that's the word that's used for humans as we take care of this place. We serve and we guard. Most of us are probably just a little more familiar with the other creation vocation. That is the call of God on us as human beings. In chapter 1, verse 27, it says that the Lord God made them male and female, and he called them to rule and subdue the earth. He made them in the image of God, which again is best interpreted as to represent God, to be God's agents on the earth, to practice what God practices in relation to the rest of creation. Again, dependent on Ted Hebert, he says, I, I'd like to call this stewarding the earth. 
You're placed here to steward in God's name. You're viceroys appointed with this privileged task of acting in the name of God. Later on, the Old Testament writer clarifies what it is that God's mission, God's vocation is when it says God of gods and Lord of lords makes justice for orphans and widows and loves strangers and feeds and clothes them. And you should do the same because you have that history. That's where you're from too. The vocation, the common human vocation from creation for all of us as human beings is to steward this place where we're from and where we are where we're going. Humans flourish by embracing our God-given vocation. Our God-given vocation summarized in that 60s worship song, they'll know we are Christians by our love. If you're as old as I am, you're probably marking that as one of the songs you heard and sang so many times you wish you'd never even hear reference to it again. But do you know that it was crafted by a South Side Chicago priest? And those words that rankled me as a Mennonite brethren who knew that pride was a bad idea from the start. They'll know we are Christians by our love. We are to save each man's dignity and guard each man's pride. That's the essence of our call. So the invitation is come church, join the vocation that God has given us here at Willow and San Gabriel in this spot shaped by all the folks that God has brought into our lives. All those witnesses whose names appear on the wall, those early pastors, Waldo Hebert, Werner Croker, and the names of people who, when they hear those names, it means nothing to you. You just showed up here and you don't know what I'm talking about. And you too have a name that has shaped our lives so that we are forever different than what we were before you came. Because you're there, you're here with us hearing this call. We've summarized it like this. We, we call it our faith, our mission statement. And we say, we believe, which is a faith statement, but it's really a vocational statement. We believe we are Christians. We believe Christians are to follow Jesus Christ daily and radically. We are dedicated, therefore, to be an inclusive community without discrimination, promoting openness, it's a vocation. Today, as a congregation, we'll stay around and reflect for a while about what it means to have our arms open and welcome. But this sermon is not a political speech to try to get you to vote one way or another on a resolution. It's a call for us to look into God's word and to hear the vocation, which is to be God's stewards, guarding, keeping, protecting the soil, the living things, fellow humans, wherever they are. And God calls and invites us to think, where am I from? Where are my fellow humans from? And what does it mean then for me to breathe life into all the fledgling life that surrounds us? A call for each of us to reflect 
and for us together to serve. Amen.